If you haven't played a Pokemon game in a while and somebody asked you what you thought the best Pokemon of all time was, you'd probably say something like Mewtwo. If you've played a decent amount of Pokemon over the last two decades, you might say something like Groudon or Kyogre. If you consider yourself more than a casual fan, you'd probably answer something like Mega Rayquaza or Zacian. But if you've played a ton of Pokemon, you'd know the answer is obvious because it isn't really even up for debate. The best Pokemon ever is Incineroar. Some of you may be confused. Incineroar? The starter from Alola? The Smash Bros ultimate character? The thing that haunts my nightmares? Yes, the thing is, what makes Incineroar the best Pokemon ever isn't immediately obvious. It doesn't have stats that make Mewtwo look like Flittle. It doesn't have some stupid signature ability. It doesn't have a move that made me throw up the first time I saw it, or any one utterly broken tool that makes it game-breaking. How could it possibly be stronger than all-time great Pokemon like Kyogre, Mega Rayquaza, or Screamtail? Huh, that's a really good list. I bet whoever made it is like super good looking. Well, to understand what makes Incineroar so strong, we have to get our hands dirty. For the full picture, it's gonna take some digging. Today, I wanna talk about why Incineroar is the best Pokemon ever made. To do this, we need to start at the beginning. Not the beginning of Pokemon, but the beginning of our nightmare. In Generation 7, with the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon. But Incineroar's introduction to the world of competitive Pokemon was lackluster. In fact, despite the first year of Sun and Moon using a rule set of legal Pokemon that was very limited, allowing for a lot of creativity and Pokemon selection, Incineroar's usage was below 1%. Now, I know what you're thinking. How could a Pokemon that performed so badly in its debut season possibly be the greatest Pokemon of all time? <sighs> Wouldn't it be nice if that had been true? The thing is, when Incineroar was first released, it was missing something very important. But we'll get to that in a little bit. In the first year of Sun and Moon, there was basically no reason to use Incineroar because there was a better Fire-type Pokemon, Arcanine. What made Arcanine so good was, in large part, its access to the ability Intimidate, one of the best competitive abilities of all time. The combination of Intimidate and good stats, with Fire's great defensive typing, would allow Arcanine to become the number one most used Pokemon at the time. But this blissful period, okay, Sun and Moon weren't exactly blissful with Z-Moves KOing Pokemon through Protect, but this relatively blissful period wouldn't last long. The cat couldn't be contained by a cage, and in early 2018, Pokemon made the biggest mistake of the entire franchise. Bigger even than putting this tree in Sword and Shield. They gave Incineroar Intimidate. This might not sound like a very big deal. It's not like Incineroar got a mega evolution or a new form. It just got access to an ability that isn't even all that rare. You can probably think of a couple pretty infamous Intimidate users right now. But unfortunately, even though it might not sound too imposing, this one change would forever alter the course of competitive Pokemon. Like I said, Intimidate is arguably the best ability in the game. There's a couple reasons why. First, in Pokemon, almost all damaging moves are either physical attacks or special attacks. And typically, the balance between them is about 50-50. Intimidate lowers the physical attack of both opponents every time the user hits the field. After just a single Intimidate, a Pokemon's physical attack stat is two thirds of its starting value. After a second Intimidate, that's down to 50%. And these stat drops stick around until you switch your Pokemon out, making them extremely annoying. So Incineroar went from a Pokemon that basically didn't have an ability to a Pokemon with one of the best abilities in the entire game. And in doing so, all of the latent tools in Incineroar's kit were suddenly activated. Incineroar, Incineroar is so stupid. I bet six Incineroar could beat any team. Maybe, maybe five Incineroar. I should remake that Lions video. <clears throat> Intimidate is extremely strong, but not strong enough to let just any Intimidate Pokemon give me nightmares. <laughs> Intimidate is on other Pokemon that nobody wants to use, like Masquerain, Mightyena, Granbull. Okay, I might have tried some of these at one point or another, but normal people wouldn't be interested in using them. What I'm trying to say is that there's less Intimidate Pokemon that have been used than Intimidate Pokemon that haven't. So what makes some of these Pokemon better than others? And what makes Incineroar the best of them all? 
Well, when it comes to Intimidate, the ability becomes much more valuable the more often you're able to activate it during a battle. For a Pokemon like Mightyena, its base stats aren't high enough to allow it to repeatedly switch in without taking massive amounts of damage, even with Intimidate helping out. A Pokemon like Masquerade is slightly tankier, but has many more weaknesses, meaning it's still a liability to switch in. Gyarados, on the other hand, has good defenses and only two weaknesses, and Arcanine is even tankier. So at least part of our answer has to do with how easy it is to switch in the Intimidate user. That's mostly a combination of a Pokemon's base stats and its typing. The better your Pokemon is defensively, the more frequently you can activate Intimidate during a battle. Remember how Arcanine was the number one most used Pokemon in Sun and Moon's first competitive format, in large part due to its access to Intimidate? Well, why don't we compare the stats of Arcanine and Incineroar? When it comes to bulk, Incineroar is strictly better. With 5 more HP, 10 more defense, and 10 more special defense, Incineroar has a meaningful advantage over Arcanine. In fact, Incineroar also has a higher attack stat. The only relevant stat where Arcanine has an advantage is its higher speed stat, but Incineroar's lower speed stat is actually more useful here, though I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a step back and think about what we're seeing here. Incineroar has strictly better stats than the number one most used Pokemon in the format. Better than number one! And it has the exact same ability that enabled Arcanine to take the spotlight. Beginning to see why this might be a problem? Okay, but let's calm down. There is a key difference between Arcanine and Incineroar. Their typing is not the same. While Arcanine is a pure fire type Pokemon, Incineroar is both fire and dark. Surely having this extra type hurts more than it helps, right? Right? Wrong. Incineroar's typing is pretty much a strict upgrade compared to Arcanine's. Both Arcanine and Incineroar are weak to rock, water, and ground attacks. But Incineroar is also weak to fighting moves. Being a dark type, however, has several benefits in exchange for this one additional weakness. First, Incineroar gains resistances to dark and ghost with Ghost being an especially difficult type to resist. This puts Incineroar's total resistances and immunities at 7, a stupidly high number for a non-Steel-type Pokemon. Second, Incineroar gains an immunity to Psychic Attacks. Immunities are incredibly valuable in competitive Pokemon, as they're one of the only ways to completely negate damage. And this was especially valuable in Sun and Moon because of the powerful Psychic-type Pokemon running around. Tapu Lele set up the Psychic Terrain with its ability and could output enormous amounts of damage, and the Pokemon Company then unleashed Ultra Necrozma, who had access to the signature Z-move, Light That Burns My Eyes, a move with a whopping 200 base power. Incineroar being immune to these ridiculously strong attacks is just another absurd accomplishment on its resume. Being part Dark-type has other benefits as well. Most notably, Dark-type Pokemon are immune to attacks affected by the ability Prankster. Prankster is another of the best abilities in the game, and some of the most famous Pokemon in history make use of this powerful ability that gives non-damaging moves priority. Because the ability is so good, going into Sun and Moon, it was nerfed to no longer work on Dark-type Pokemon. As a slight aside, because it's so cool, in the finals of the 2017 World Championships, a player used this mechanic change to completely block an opponent's Z-move. Whimsicott was using the move Nature Power, a move that is classified as a non-damaging move because it transforms into a different move depending on where the player is and what effects are present on the battlefield. The reason Whimsicott used this move is because it was paired with both Tapu Fini and Tapu Koko, with Nature Power transforming into Moonblast if Misty Terrain was up, and Thunderbolt if Electric Terrain was up. And both Z-moves could be accessed by holding the Normalium Z-Crystal, because Nature Power is a normal move until it transforms. In other words, Whimsicott could use both Fairy and Electric Z-moves by using Nature Power. In Game 3 of the finals of the World Championships, Whimsicott was staring down a Garchomp and saw an opportunity to take a KO by switching in Tapu Fini and launching the Z-move for a surprise knockout. But the opponent predicted this and switched Garchomp into Mandibuzz, a Pokemon also weak to Fairy. But because Nature Power is a non-damaging move, it gets affected by Prankster and turns into a priority move, which is great, unless your opponent is a dark type like Mandibuzz because in that case, you will completely waste your once per battle Z-move while also doing no damage. Anyway, as you can see, being immune to dark type moves can make or break a battle, but there is a drawback to being a dark type. Incineroar gains another weakness to fighting. 
And of course, having more weaknesses is a bad thing, but not all weaknesses are created equally. Some types are just strictly better than others. You'd pretty much always rather be weak to bug than to fairy, for example. And while fighting type moves are always present in competitive Pokemon, they're rarely among the most common. And there's another reason why Incineroar's fighting weakness isn't actually that big of a deal. Nearly every relevant fighting type Pokemon is a physical attacker. This is partially because of how their stats are distributed and partially because physical fighting type moves are far and away superior to special fighting type moves. And the reason these moves being physical is such a big deal is because of Intimidate. While taking a super effective attack means you're taking two times as much damage, if that attack is physical and has been reduced by Intimidate, you're effectively only taking 33% more damage a much more manageable multiplier. And this doesn't just apply to Incineroar's fighting weakness, it's true of rock and ground type moves as well. While there are more special ground and rock type moves than fighting, the vast majority of times we see these types in competitive Pokemon, they're on physical attackers. So hitting Incineroar for actual meaningful super effective damage is a lot more difficult than it looks at first glance. The messed up thing is that Fire and Dark is such a good type combination, even not factoring in Intimidate. When I ranked every single type combination in the game, I put it at number 13 out of over 150. The fact that Intimidate just so happens to synergize incredibly well with it is just a fun little bonus. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Honkai Impact 3rd. It's a sci-fi adventure game developed by Hoyaverse. The game now has a 3D combat system and supports free jumping, which really enhances gameplay. Players now can fight monsters and defeat bosses in the air, which, I mean, who doesn't love a little aerial combat? On top of that, players can climb onto the walls, which adds complexity to the battlefield. And now, players can directly play Part 2. A brand new story, entirely new worlds, and new protagonists are available in Part 2 making it the perfect time to join for both new and returning players. Enhanced character modeling reveals more details than ever before, with more refined animation. There's also a new s rank character called Senadina, not to mention other new characters like Coralai, Helia, and Song-Q. You can even get Coralai for free. Plus, you can get one s rank character and one outfit from Part 1. Download Honkai Impact 3rd now and use the redeem code TRIP2MARS to get tons of rewards. Thanks again to Honkai Impact 3rd for sponsoring this video. Of course, being able to switch in and intimidate down your opponent without taking too much damage isn't the only thing that makes a Pokemon good. They need to be able to actually contribute to the battle after switching in so they're not just dead weight. The easiest way to contribute to a battle is to deal damage. It's not rocket science. But Incineroar is a support Pokemon, so you'd think that doing damage wouldn't be its forte. And if you did think that, you'd be kind of right. Incineroar rarely looks like it's doing a Zacian impression. It's not going to be the Pokemon sweeping through your opponent's team. However, most support Pokemon really struggle to do damage, often because Pokemon that are bulkier tend to have worse offensive stats. Pokemon like Cresselia, Amoongus, Whimsicott, Ndidi, Porygon2, and more at best are able to gradually chip down their opponents, contributing a little damage over time if you ignore them for too long. Incineroar, however, is built different. With an attack stat higher than Arcanine's, it's not a Pokemon you can afford to ignore. And with its fire type move Flare Blitz's huge base power, Incineroar is capable of KOing many frail Pokemon in two hits, even without super effective damage. And that's not to mention that Flare Blitz also has a chance to burn. Isn't that fun? And if you can even believe it, Flare Blitz is the least problematic of Incineroar's moves. Incineroar also gets a signature dark type move called Darkest Lariat. Because yeah, why not give it a signature move? Darkest Lariat was used occasionally as it ignores defense boosts, but it wasn't normally Incineroar's dark type move of choice. That honor instead goes to Knock Off. This 65 base power move not only removes the item of any Pokemon it hits, it also becomes 50% stronger if the target is holding an item. After the damage boost, Knock Off is comparable in power to strong moves like Stone Edge, except instead of, you know, missing 20% of the time, it instead removes the item of whatever it hits. Knockoff means even in the situations where Incineroar isn't immediately threatening a ton of damage, it can still be a complete nuisance if you think you can ignore it. But Knockoff also isn't Incineroar's most problematic move. Now we get to talk about one of the best supporting moves of all time, Fake Out. 
Fake Out is a move with enough increased priority that it goes before almost all standard moves, and if it hits a target, it causes them to flinch, being unable to act for the turn. The catch is that Fake Out only works on the first turn after a Pokemon switches in. Fake Out is so strong because it allows players to control the pace of the battle. With Fake Out, you can use your partner to attack into a Pokemon that can't protect or to buy yourself a turn to save a Pokemon that was under a lot of pressure. You can use it to temporarily invalidate a threat to let one of your other Pokemon set up. And you can even use the threat of Fake Out to scare your opponent into protecting, letting you switch out for free. You'll never be upset to have Fake Out on your team since it offers such high value and is useful in virtually every matchup. Not to mention that Fake Out is one way for Incineroar to not be bothered by its lower speed stat since it has such high priority. But the really cool thing is that Fake Out synergizes so well with Intimidate. Since Intimidate and Fake Out both become active whenever Incineroar is switched in, as long as you can switch Incineroar out safely, you'll be able to access both Fake Out and Intimidate multiple times per battle. Gee, it sure would be funny if Incineroar got some kind of, I don't know, specialized tool to let it switch out easier, huh? Wouldn't that just be swell? Huh? It's finally time to talk about the stupidest move that they gave to Incineroar, U-Turn. This bug type move does a little damage and then lets the user switch out. Even with every other thing the Pokemon company gave to Incineroar, it still might have been manageable if they just hadn't given it U-Turn. It's not that U-Turn is some absurd damaging tool. It's weaker than Incineroar's other moves and Bug isn't exactly a good type. What makes U-Turn so broken is the ability to switch out after you hit something with it. Doing a little damage and switching out doesn't sound very exciting at first glance. After all, every Pokemon can switch out. But there is a key distinction here. U-Turn lets you switch out after you attack. Normally, switching is one of the riskiest things you can do in a Pokemon battle. You're sacrificing your ability to do damage for the turn and bringing in a Pokemon who is completely vulnerable, unable to attack or protect. A bad switch can lose you the game if you let a key Pokemon take too much damage. The trade-off is that switching allows you to save a Pokemon currently in danger and bring out a Pokemon with a better matchup. Overall, I'd say it's a really well-balanced mechanic, but Incineroar completely breaks it. Thanks to its low speed stat, Incineroar is able to move after your opponent has already attacked for the turn. And with U-Turn, it's able to bring in one of your other Pokemon after your opponent has already attacked. This completely mitigates the drawback of switching in one of your Pokemon and allows Incineroar to switch itself out, resetting both Intimidate and Fake Out. This one inclusion in its move pool takes Incineroar from one of the best support Pokemon of all time to the very best. Everything in its kit synergizes so well together, and it has no obvious weaknesses. Incineroar was so good once it got Intimidate that it literally killed off one of the best Pokemon of all time, Landorus Therian. Just like Incineroar, Landorus gets access to Intimidate and U-Turn, but unlike Incineroar, it's better utilized as an offensive Pokemon. Because of this, Landorus has a much harder time making use of U-Turn as a defensive tool, using it instead as an offensive move to do damage to grass and psychic type Pokemon who can give it trouble otherwise. Ever since Incineroar's hit its stride, Landorus usage has plummeted, and Landorus has never won a world championships while Incineroar has been legal. So now that you know what makes Incineroar so strong, let's go back to 2018 when Intimidate Incineroar was first introduced. At this point, players hadn't yet realized how good Incineroar was, and in part due to Landorus being a great Z-Move user while Incineroar was mediocre with the mechanic, at the World Championships that year, Incineroar was second in usage to Landorus. However, despite being present on fewer teams than Landorus, Incineroar took every spot in the top four finishers, while Landorus was only present on two of those teams. Of course, Incineroar's great performance this year would be laughable compared to the utter domination it would show in 2019. The next year's format was the final format of Sun and Moon, and it featured a different rule set than 2018. The rule set is known as a restricted format, which means that players are allowed to use two super powerful Pokemon on their teams. Now, you might expect Incineroar to do worse in a restricted format. After all, Pokemon like Groudon and Kyogre can much more easily deal damage to Incineroar, with Kyogre being one of the only Pokemon that can KO it in one hit. But here's the thing, the stronger the Pokemon are, the more valuable Intimidate is, the more valuable Fake Out is, 
and the more valuable being able to switch in one of your super powerful Pokemon for free is. Incineroar very quickly became the king. At the 2019 World Championships, Incineroar was present on over 83% of teams, the single highest usage of any Pokemon in the history of the game by a long shot. In 2018, Landorus T was used on 61% of teams as the most used Pokemon in the tournament for comparison. This kind of usage indicates that Incineroar wasn't just good, it wasn't even just great. It was nearly mandatory on every team at the top level. Its ability to do so many different things at once, combined with various tools against the super strong restricted Pokemon, meant you needed to have a really good reason to leave it off your team. A reason only a handful of players found. Oh yeah, we haven't even talked about how its dark typing this year was a total game changer, giving it a great matchup against new restricted Pokemon Lunala, Sogaleo, and Ultra Necrozma. One thing that makes Incineroar so hard to deal with is the fact that it's a support Pokemon. When an offensive Pokemon is dominating tournaments, players can invest in more niche Pokemon that happen to have a good matchup against it, such as Bronzong to slow down Xerneas. The idea is, as long as your Pokemon is decent enough, if your opponent brings the threatening offensive Pokemon to the battle, they'll need to deal with your counter, and if they leave it behind, then they've just given up a lot of their offense and one of their more threatening tools. It's not like there isn't counterplay to Incineroar. Pokemon like Competitive Milotic and Defiant Basharp saw play in some formats, but the problem was nobody was relying on Incineroar for damage. They could afford to leave it behind if the opponent prepared too much for it, or keep it off the field until the threats were neutralized. Plus, these Pokemon that match up well into Incineroar tended to have a harder time when they weren't boosted by it, making them a liability at times. Ultimately, all the power was in the hands of the Incineroar player. But after Incineroar's dominance at the 2019 World Championships, there was at last a ray of hope. After two years being beaten down by Incineroar, players could see salvation, sword and shield. Pokemon doesn't get balance patches. Unlike games like Team Fight Tactics, which receive a balance patch every two weeks, or an emergency patch when something is really out of line, thank you Mort Dog, Pokemon at best receives balancing changes every three years when a new generation comes out. This was the light at the end of the tunnel. Surely the Pokemon company would see how insanely broken Incineroar was and nerf it in some way. Finally, we could find peace. They buffed it? They gave it one of the single largest buffs any Pokemon has ever received in the entire history of the game? Ah! Remember how we talked about how strong U-Turn was? Well, the good news is that it's now mostly obsolete. The bad news is that that's because they gave Incineroar an upgraded version of it called Parting Shot. This move is just like U-Turn in that it switches the user out after it connects. However, unlike U-Turn, which does a little damage, Parting Shot lowers both the attack and the special attack of whatever it hits. That's right, Incineroar can now double down on physical attackers and weaken special attackers, the only class of Pokemon it couldn't weaken before. Thanks, Pikachu! There was an attempt at balancing Incineroar. Certain old abilities were reworked to be immune to Intimidate, and Fake Out didn't work on Dynamax Pokemon because they couldn't flinch. But the Pokemon who had these reworked abilities were across the board pretty mediocre, and the ability to weaken a Dynamax Pokemon's offenses with Intimidate and Parting Shot more than made up for the inability to flinch. We can't say too much about Incineroar's performance during the first two years of Pokemon Sword and Shield, as due to the pandemic, in-person major events were cancelled. What we can say though is that of the four online events the Pokemon Company held to replace in-person events, called the Players' Cup 1 through 4, Incineroar won all four. Every single one. Okay, to be fair, one of those was my fault, so um, yeah, my bad. But in 2022, in-person tournaments returned again, with another restricted format. And Incineroar won every single major in the US, every single major in Europe except one where it finished second, every single major in Australia, nearly every single major in the rest of the world, all three international level tournaments, and the World Championships. Incineroar was used on 74% of all teams at the World Championships in 2022, finishing on seven of the top eight teams in the tournament. While this is technically lower usage than the World Championships in 2019, it's in my opinion just as impressive as even more Pokemon were viable in 2022 that hadn't been in 2019. So having Incineroar continue to be so mandatory on almost every team 
despite the wider field, is an impressive feat. Which brings us to Scarlet and Violet, and in 2023, Incineroar was not in the game for the first year of competition. But just recently, Incineroar was added back into the game with the Indigo Disc DLC, which meant an opportunity for Pokemon to correct their mistake. After two generations and five years of complete Incineroar domination, surely this time they're gonna nerf it. They buffed it again? Are you kidding me? Okay, so this buff is smaller, but it is still a big deal. Incineroar was given Helping Hand, a move that goes before all other moves and powers up its partner's attack by a whopping 50%. This is an amazing move, and it's extremely valuable on a support Pokemon like Incineroar. However, they did add more counterplay this time around that has actually succeeded in slowing, not stopping Incineroar. First, two new items were added, Covert Cloak and Clear Amulet. Covert Cloak stops the secondary effects of moves, making Fake Out not flinch, while Clear Amulet prevents a Pokemon's stats from being lowered by Intimidate or Parting Shot. These items are massive, as is the fact that Inner Focus Pokemon are stronger now than during Sword and Shield, in part due to their synergy with Chen Pao and the benefit they receive from Terrestrialization. On top of the items, several new Pokemon were added with anti-Incineroar abilities. Dindozo has Oblivious, making it immune to Intimidate, and King Gambit and Annihilate are both Pokemon with Defiant, powering them up if any stat is dropped. Not to mention, Terra Ghost is a great defensive tool on fast and frail Pokemon to get around Fake Out in a pinch. And so it came to be that when Incineroar was finally added to the game, top competitive players were shocked to find it actually manageable. They started calling it mid Cineroar. YouTubers were making videos saying it was washed and that it fell off. And to a certain extent, I get it. We were used to a level of dominance from Incineroar that was unmatched by any other Pokemon. And with the new counterplay available, it finally felt like, well, just a good Pokemon. At the first tournament after Incineroar was added to the game, its performance was disappointing. Only two finishes in the entire top eight. Was this it? Was Incineroar finally brought back to Earth? Had the king been toppled from his throne? Save us all from this one. The flare blitz from the Incineroar is going to deal so much damage to the Urshifu to put it on one last life. And with that attack, Wolf Glick becomes your Charlotte regional champion. The no king way. is back, ladies and gentlemen. Nope. 